Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're gonna to be doing a video that's a follow-up video to a recent one that I just released about getting started flipping furniture. Starting small, how do you do it? So I get questions on a daily basis. I teach one-on-one. -on -one. I have a paid membership group where I teach and coach women and men how to get started flipping furniture. And can you actually make this a sustainable business? The answer is yes. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna answer some questions today. I'm gonna to talk about some processes and hopefully shed some light on how do you get started doing this? All right, number one thing I can suggest to you, just get started. If you've been toying with the idea of trying to start flipping furniture, I would definitely suggest just going for it. Start with a small piece like I showed you in that most recent video, because starting small is number less two. Find your piece of furniture. Now here's something that's kind of fun. You might have some furniture in your house that you could start with. So you don't even have to put out an original investment. That's what I did. When I started doing this, I was looking for pieces within my own home that I thought, hey, I could update that. And if I mess it up or I need to redo it, it's mine. So I would suggest kind of shopping in your own home, looking right, for, let's say you've already done that. You've already shopped in your own home. You've already redone a couple pieces or you just don't want to. You want to dive right in and start seeing if you can really make some money at this. So where I would suggest starting your shopping is Facebook. That is my number one place that I search. I search three times a day, every day. So I search in my local Facebook groups and on Marketplace. Another spot to shop on is Craigslist and OfferUp. All right, so here I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the process of just shopping for things on Marketplace. I go right to Marketplace and then I go over on the menu bar there and choose Home Goods and then I go up to the top and choose furniture. This will narrow down my search and then you can even narrow it down even more but I really want the realm of what's going on in my area and so I just sift through. I do this three times a day every day morning middle of the afternoon and again at night to make sure that I haven't missed anything really good. Right now is a tough time buying used furniture. There's a lot out there but the pricing is just not right for someone who's trying to make a profit. I'm going to show you this one here. It's a beautiful dresser. Normally I would be interested in this but the price is too high. $300 for that? No. Two big questions I get asked on a regular. What do I pay for a piece? And eventually, the next question, which we'll get to later, is what do I sell a piece for? Let's just talk about what you pay for pieces. So it's going to vary on a couple of different things. First of all, what is the piece? What's the size of the piece? What's the condition of the piece? What is the uniqueness of the piece? So that's one thing. The other thing is your geographical location. It's gonna be different for me here in California than it may be for you in the Midwest. So here's what I can tell you. Um, you wanna start, obviously, um, as low as you possibly can. So for instance, in my last video, the single maple nightstand that I had was advertised for sale for $40. A little too much for me. I mean, it's not a bad price, but it was too much for me. I wanna make as most the most profit that I can on a piece. So I've gotta buy it for as little as I possibly can. I offered the person $25 and they took it. That's a really good price point. Now, what I can tell you is also I have a pricing sheet, a pricing sheet that goes over what you can sell pieces for, what you should custom finish them for. As you get into this and you start really realizing that this is something you wanna do, that's something down the road that you may want to invest in. I'm actually in the process of coming up with another type of a pricing sheet and that is what do I buy pieces for? Giving you some ranges and some ideas so you know you're not buying things too high or you're getting a really good deal. Right. You've got your piece, now what? Well, now comes the work. You need to do a few things. You need to prep your piece. You need to get your products for your piece. So what do you use? Okay, let me just tell you, I have a bunch of videos on here. If you haven't already seen them, make sure you go search my video library. I've got videos on prepping pieces. I've got videos on different product reviews, paint product reviews as well. I also have my favorites. So this will help you determine what products to land on. What may work for me though, may not work for you. Whether it's a budget thing or you just like something versus me not liking something. I have not liked every single product I have tried, but I will tell you that I have done over the years so many paint product reviews and I have a more recent video that talks about 
all of the paints I have reviewed years later and what do I think of them today? So the first thing you need to do is purchase your products to clean, go check out that prep video, and also what paint products to get started. Once you have landed on that, then you're ready to get started. It's as easy as getting that piece cleaned and prepped and ready to go. Now some pieces are gonna require more prep than others. What I would suggest, just getting started, try to get a piece in its best original condition that you can. Do not attempt to paint over already painted pieces. I don't even do that now and I've been doing this seven years. I will not take on work or buy pieces that are already been painted by somebody else. That is a whole headache in itself. You don't know what was what products were used. You don't know how it was prepped. Um, your finish is only going to be as good as the finish that's on there unless you completely remove it and that's way too much time already invested. The thing you have to remember when you are flipping furniture is you have to think about your time Time because that's also something you need to be paid for. So as I say, you're going to be prepping your piece. I would try to go with a piece that's in as good of original condition as you can possibly find that will alleviate the time and more products. When you're just getting started, you don't want to have to worry about repairs or bondo or wood filling. You want to be able to clean, prep, and go. All right, so once you're at the point where you have now prepped your piece, you've painted your piece, and you've chosen the products that you're gonna use, whether that's a wax or a top coat, or there's a lot of all-in-one paints out there on the market. They are a little more costly, but you have to remember, they've got an all-in-one built in, which is typically a primer, a paint, and a top coat, which would alleviate more products and more steps. All right, so you've watched all the videos, your piece is prepped, your piece is painted, your piece is ready to go, what do you do next? Well, you need to stage it. You need to put that piece in its best possible light and use some staging props. Now I'm gonna give you a little hint. I use staging props all over my house for the first few years. I did not go out and invest. I didn't go to Hobby Lobby and go shopping. I looked in my own home and tried to gather a few staging items. And what I would suggest you doing is go take a look at my website, look at my photo gallery. My staging is simple. I don't go too crazy with it. I try to make it appealing and give vision to the piece for people to see it so that they can see how that's gonna look and feel in their home. Lighting is key when you're staging, so find a good Good spot. When I first started, I was staging anywhere I could find that was like a blank area and it had good lighting. I moved pieces all over my house. I did them in the garage. The one thing I will suggest to you, and it's just my own personal thing, is don't stage it outside in the lawn or in a field. It's really hard for people to conceptualize a piece of furniture in their bedroom that's been sitting in a field. Even though it's all nice and beautiful, it's just not as appealing. So find a blank wall with some good lighting, grab a couple of home decor items from your own home and stage that. Now, listing your piece, where do you list it? My best, best suggestion is to list it on Facebook in your local sale groups and on Marketplace. Marketplace will get you a ton of visibility, but some people don't go visit Marketplace, so you wanna also target your local groups as well for your town or your city. What do you say about the piece? What do I do when I'm listing my piece? I'm gonna give you guys an example of one of my sale posts so that you can see when I post how I post. You wanna give them the vital information that they need, not just the photos. You wanna answer the questions. What are the dimensions? You wanna list the color that you used. And sometimes, even in parentheses, I will describe the color because so often have I posted a piece in a neutral color and somebody has seen it white. The one thing I will tell you is everybody sees color differently. So if you can describe the color in your post, that is even better. Again, alleviates the back and forth and a lot of questions. All right, so here's just a quick peek at one of my posts on Facebook. Several different photos are recommended. Put in a description, color, price, obviously, and as much as you can fit in your ad about the piece. Now you obviously wanna list a price for your piece. This is where my price sheet can come in handy because you will know within a range how to price your pieces. My pricing sheet has broken down by category, dressers, nightstands, um, tables, you know, all kinds of different styles of furniture and what is kind of the going rate. Now, if you don't have my pricing sheet or you don't have the budget right now, it's only $12.95. So I will tell you it's about the price of maybe three coffees at Starbucks, but I understand. 
Having a budget is super important, especially when you're just getting started. So if you don't have the budget to buy the pricing sheet right now, it's just not in the realm, then what I would do is go search on Facebook in the marketplace area, in your local groups, and see what similar pieces are going for. That's how I started. Before I developed a pricing sheet, I would look at what other people quality of what I was selling and size of what I was selling and see what they were selling for and kind of base my price around that. All right, so now you're getting messages about your piece. People are inquiring about your piece. Here's the one tip I will give you. You're going to get people asking if you will take less money than what you posted it for. Don't jump the gun and reduce that price. Hold strong. The thing you have to remember is you put money out. You put money out for the piece, for your products, for your time, make sure you hold strong on your price. If you are priced right, that piece will sell. Don't be nervous if it doesn't sell in the first day or the first week. The market has different times where it's slower and you just have to kind of roll with it and realize your piece will eventually find the right home. All right, so you're getting messages. You want to set times for people to come see your piece. Here's what I'm going to tell you as far as that goes do what you're comfortable with. I've been doing this seven years. I've never had any problems or issues. However, I err on the side of caution and I do things like making sure I don't show a piece when I'm here by myself. My husband works from home and he's typically always here. That's a very comfortable thing for me to know. The other thing is I would always make it in an outdoor area, in your garage. Don't let the people come into your home. That's uncomfortable for you and it's uncomfortable for the buyer. So make sure if you can put it outside on your front porch maybe, in your garage, in your driveway, meet them outside. I always tell people when you arrive, make sure you text me and I'll come out and meet you. I have never, ever, ever shown a piece inside my home. It's just not something I'm comfortable with. And like I said, it's not something most people are comfortable with either. When I'm showing my piece, I never push people to buy my pieces. I'm not a salesperson, I'm an artist. So what I do is let my pieces speak for themselves. I do encourage people, open the drawers, open the doors, take a look at it, be sure because all sales are final. In this type of an industry, I would recommend that. It can be really problematic for people to buy a big piece of furniture or a small piece of furniture, take it home, put it in their space, and then contact you and wanna bring it back. During that time, it could get damaged. It's just one of those things, it's kind of an all sales final type of industry. Make sure you're very clear and concise about that so that your potential customer understands. So, how I started, was exactly like I'm telling you to start. Just get started, pick a piece and just go. I didn't know anything when I first started other than just basic painting tips. I've turned this into a full-time sustainable business and I've been doing this for almost seven years. So it is possible and I'm here to tell you that you can definitely, definitely make money at this. Whether you wanna do this on the side hustle to your, to your current job, you wanna do this as a hobby, if you're just looking to make some extra money for a vacation, pay some bills, it's absolutely possible to make money doing this. All right, you guys, that is the process in a nutshell. Now I know we just basically touched on most of the general topics within the process. If you want more detailed information, I do teach virtually one-on-one. -on -one. I also have a coaching membership group. It's not currently open, but it's gonna be opening soon. So that might be something you may be interested in as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this video was helpful for you. I really wanted to do a follow-up to that recent video that I had put out there to detail some of the processes. I so appreciate you being subscribers. If you aren't subscribed, make sure you go hit that subscription button as well as the post notification bell so that you're notified when all of my latest videos are released. Plus, you get to be a part of my YouTube community, which helps me keep my channel going and keeps me supported. Thank you again. And if you want more information about my one-on-ones or my coaching membership group, go ahead and visit www.bornandabarnboutique.net to find out more information about them.